就我们刚才用中文聊天，会不会被被告？是啊。Yeah, yeah, right. 啊。对对，皮肤，我们那就更少了。其实，真的，我们那儿，因为像有的老师，他们都是做的比较那种 estuary lake 的观测，就不并不是说出到 open ocean 里面。Yes. Yeah. And today he will talk about the bubble indicated as the gas exchange. Um, okay, thank you for having me here. Uh, today I'm going to talk about my on bubble mediated air sea gas exchange. And this work has been um, in collaboration with a lot of uh, observationists and modelers, including Steve Emerson, Eric Dasaro, Ramsey Harker, Craig. McNeil and Curtis Deutsch at the University of Washington, Peter Sullivan at Ankara, Jim McWilliams at UCLA, Megan Crowling from NOAA, who also provided me the data, Berka Beshek, who is now in Germany, and also Bo Yang, who used to be a, um, a, a graduate student here. And uh, this work has been funded by the National Science Foundation. And uh, the background image here shows a um, ocean surface under Hurricane Isabel in 2003. And, uh, and as you can see, the ocean it no longer looks blue. There are a lot of white patches here. And for example, these are breaking wave floods, and these are uh, the bubbles after a wave breaking event, while these lines along the winds are uh, those signals organized by uh, lamier circulations. And, and, and so the, there are a lot of bubbles in the ocean as can be seen from these uh, optical images and the bubbles can also be seen in acoustic images for example this is a acoustic backscatter images the x-axis here is time and the y-axis here is water depth and the warm color means a lot of backscatter and a lot of gas bubbles and this measurement is taken at ocean station papa which is a uh, mooring observations in the subarctic uh, low Pacific Ocean and uh, and the wind speed is about 12 meters per second so the wind speed is much weaker than under a hurricane and we can see that there are bubbles penetrating to uh, more than 10 meters water depth and at the surface there are more of these uh, bubble events and, and these are uh, due to the uh, breaking wave in chain bubbles so from these two uh, observations, we can see that the ocean is full of bubbles. There are a lot of bubbles in the ocean. So why do we want to study bubbles? And bubbles has 
many importance in a lot of fields. For example, bubbles has been proposed to be able to reflect sunlight uh, to offset uh, global warming, and it also has been proposed to um, aerate bottom water so that to reduce acidification at the bottom of the ocean. And, uh, and when there are a lot of bubbles at the surface ocean because they are buoyant, they suppress turbulence. And, 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 and if you do ocean color remote sensing, then you probably want to remove the signal of bubbles. And, and bubbles can, um, has also been proposed to quantify um, the, the, the power of the hurricanes, the wind speeds. And, and on a climate perspective, bubbles, when they burst at the ocean surface, they contribute to marine aerosol productions because there are a lot of, and, and these marine aerosols are very good uh, cow condensation nuclei. So it has, it, it leads to cow formation. So it, leads, it has a big uh, climate impacts. And, but today we will mainly talk about uh, bubbles role on um, ASC gas exchange. So to make sure that we are on the same page, uh, I want to uh, give a little bit background about ASC gas exchange. Uh, first is that I want to define the gas saturation anomaly, which is uh, the relative deviation of the dissolved gas concentration from its saturation concentration times 100%. And, uh, and, and here's, uh, this is the dissolved gas concentration, while this is the uh, saturation dissolved gas concentration and is determined by the Henry's law and this dissolved gas uh, equilibrium dissolved gas concentration equals to the solubility of the gas times the fraction of that gas in the atmosphere times the atmospheric pressure. But this dissolved gas concentration um, determined by the Henry's law only exists in a beaker in the laboratory. In the ocean, because of ocean circulation, because of heating, uh, cooling, because of mixing, um, the dissolved gas concentration seldom equals to this equilibrium dissolved gas concentration. So in the ocean, the, the water is either uh, supersaturated, meaning that this dissolved gas concentration is larger than this saturation dissolved gas concentration, or the ocean is undersaturated, meaning that the dissolved gas concentration is smaller than the dissolved gas concentration determined by the Henry's law. And when the ocean is supersaturated, then at the ocean surface, the gases are going from the ocean to the atmosphere, so that's our guessing. And when the ocean is undersaturated, then the gases will go from the atmosphere uh, into the ocean, and, 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 and so there are gas injection at the, at the ASC interface. So this is the case uh, without any bubbles in the ocean. So what happens when there are bubbles in the ocean? Well, when there are bubbles in the ocean, uh, the pressure on the surface between the gas bubble and the ocean equals to um, the atmospheric pressure plus the hydrostatic pressure plus the surface tension. And we've seen from the acoustic images that um, uh, bubbles can penetrate to more than 10 meters water depth. And 10 meters of water depth is one atmospheric pressure. So what that means is that a bubble at a, a 10 meter water depth can dissolve even when the ocean is 100% uh, uh, supersaturated. So when the ocean is very supersaturated, um, gases can still be squeezed into the water by uh, both hydrostatic pressure and surface tension. So, and, and so what happens when there are a lot of gas bubbles in the ocean? Well, when there are a lot of gas bubbles in the ocean, um, then um, let's consider a scenario when the lead gas flux between um, the ocean and the atmosphere is zero. So lead gas flux is represented by Ft here. And, and so there are two gas fluxes. One is the gas flux at the ocean surface. And then the other one is the gas flux through the bubbles. And when could it be zero? Then uh, uh, it has, the ocean has to be supersaturated so that there are interior gas dissolution, meaning that gas is going from bubbles into the ocean and they are outgassing at the surface. And, and this is the only scenario when the, ocean, when the lead gas flux between the ocean and the atmosphere um, equals to zero, because imagine that if the ocean is undersaturated, then the gases will go from the atmosphere to the ocean through both the ocean surface and the bubble gas and, and the bubble surface, so it cannot be zero. And the only scenario when this lead gas flux is zero is 
the ocean is supersaturated. So what tells us is that um, the ocean is actually supersaturated when it is in equilibrium with the atmosphere and when there are bubbles in the ocean. And, and so we see that bubbles have two effects on ASC gas exchange. The first is that it increases the gas transfer rate and because it provides more uh, surface for ASC gas transfer to occur. The second is that um, it, has, it makes the ocean supersaturated when it is in equilibrium with the atmosphere. And, and because we have to represent this process by a parameterization in uh, Earth system models, so what would that look like? Well, it means that um, the gas flux between the ocean and the atmosphere equals to a gas transfer rate times the concentration difference between the ocean and the atmosphere. And, and so here there are two parameters. The K is the gas transfer rate, and, uh, and this KT has been uh, widely studied by a lot of observations and theoretical considerations. For example, um, these are a summary of a lot of observational campaigns. And here the x-axis is wind speed, while the y-axis is the gas transfer rate. And here 600 is the speed number of carbon dioxide in fresh water, while in some other papers you will see that the gas transfer rate is presented in K 660, 660 is the smith number of carbon dioxide in, in seawater. So um, in general, based on a lot of these um, observational studies, we now know that uh, gas transfer rate um, increase with wind speed and, and, and to the wind speed of cube or the wind speed square, depending on the parameterization that you want to use. But um, these bubble induced supersaturated condition are less studies and as I will show that um, there are a lot of, there are some uh, studies, but they are uh, uh, still predict predicting uh, very different uh, bubble induced supersaturated conditions. Um, so, uh, bubbles are so important in AC gas exchange, and, uh, and to accurately uh, study its effect on AC gas exchange, we need to know a little, about, a little bit more about bubble processes at the ocean surface. So bubbles are enchained into the ocean by wave breaking, and these are some laboratory studies by Dean and Stock in 2002, and this is a schematic how it occurs by, and, and how breaking wave can enchain air into the ocean. And, 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 and a breaking wave not only enchain bubbles of a certain size, it actually enchain bubbles of a range of sizes, and in this paper, it also uh, shows that the bubbles uh, follows a certain distributions and they provide a mechanistic explanation why um, um, why the uh, the, sh uh, the bubble distribution should follow that shape and, uh, and, 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 and the breaking wave started to enchain air at a wind speed about 5 meters per second or 4 meters per second so uh, that's why there are a lot of bubbles in the ocean and after they are enchained into the ocean, bubbles, uh, because the air is, has a much smaller density than water, so it will rise, but, but at the same time, um, the turbulence is going to uh, trap these bubbles and push them uh, downwards, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and at the same time when it is in the water, it also exchanges gases with the surrounding water, and, and the bubbles will change size in the water column, either caused by uh, the ambient water pressure, meaning that when it moves up and down, it changes sizes. And when it, when it exchanges gas with the, with the surrounding water, it also changes sizes. And there are two types of bubbles, and some of them uh, completely dissolve at the end, so they cannot burst at the ocean surface, while some of them are able to burst at the ocean surface. And this uh, separation between the completely dissolved bubbles and the partially dissolved bubbles are actually ex important in understanding and quantifying a bubble mediated AC gas exchange because uh, the, the, the fraction of the gases um, in the completely dissolved bubbles equals to their fraction in the atmosphere while the fraction of the fluxes of the gases from the partially dissolved bubbles depends on the solubility of the gas and, uh, and, and the diffusivity of that gas. Um, 
so the uh, the primary turbulent structures in the ocean boundary layer that could push bubbles into the water column that could trap the bubbles are uh, the lambial circulations and it is because the lambial circulations are coherent in the water column and, and, and you probably also know that the convective turbulence are also coherent in the water column but the difference is that the lambial circulation has its strongest vertical velocity um, near the surface while the convective cells has the maximum velocity in the middle of the boundary layer so that's why the lambial circulations are so effective in pushing the bubbles and trapping the bubbles in the water column and these uh, lambial circulations are commonly observed uh, during a good day if you look out to the ocean sometimes you will see these lines along the along the wind and this is the image I grabbed from Xing Feng's advisor's website and uh, and, and these, are, these lines are accumulation of flow stems or organic matters and uh, these lines are these convergent cells at the, at the surface of the ocean so these lines indicate that um, it is the convergent cells of the lamellar circulations and there are these counter-rotating lamellar circulations uh, below the ocean surface um, so, so far um, um, if you want to study the bubble mediated gas exchange then there are two ways to study them the first is that uh, one would measure the dissolved gas concentration in the ocean and then inversely infer the bubble flux based on an accurate knowledge of all other fluxes and then the, the second way and that's what has been done in, in most existing studies um, and then the second way is to model uh, the bubbles and if we have a very accurate bubble fields underwater in the subsurface water then we can uh, directly calculate the gas flux flow bubbles into the ocean and they are very limited uh, of these modeling studies and in this study by Wolf and Thorpe in 1991 um, their bubble fields are affected by not by some realistic uh, turbulence fields so uh, we feel a need to develop computer models to better understand uh, the bubble mediated AC gas exchange. So the, that's the objective of my study and using these uh, computer models we also hopefully could develop or improve parameterizations based on first principle for bubble mediated AC gas, gas flux. And, uh, and, and so, um, so this is the bubbles, uh, the bubble model that I use uh, is a coupled ocean bubble and dissolved gas model and in this model we have a large eddy simulation model uh, to generate the turbulent, uh, turbulent water motions just like those lamellar circulations that you see um, in those images and the schematic and there is a Lagrangian bubble model and there is also a dissolved gas model and the large eddy simulation pro uh, model provides the turbulence and the temperatures to the bubble model while uh, the, the bubbles are in chain during breaking waves and it also will burst so that um, if, you if, you, if you either lose at the ocean surface or by complete dissolution and if you exchange gas with the dissolved gas model um, it's because you may not be familiar with all these models so I will in the next few slides I will introduce um, the concepts of this model so the first is that in this image you are seeing in the x-axis is the scale of motions in the ocean while in the y-axis is the time scale of the motions in the ocean and there are a lot a lot of uh, phenomena occurring in the ocean including uh, turbulence and the waves, submissile scale, mesoscale, scale, eddies or um, drier circulations which is the largest scale of the motion in, in, the, um, in, the, in the ocean and uh, and I understand that some of you may be running uh, models like ROMS, the Regional Ocean Modeling System, or FVCOM, the Finite Volume Community Ocean Model, the HICOM, or MIT GCM. And all these models in fluid mechanics is called the fluid Reynolds Average Levier Stocks Model. And, and they are able, this model usually has a resolution of about a kilometer or larger and a time step of an hour or so. And, um, and and these models are not able to uh, simulate um, the smaller scale 
uh, motions in the ocean like the lamio turbulence or, or other types of turbulent flows in the ocean. And, and just to give you some more intuition about uh, what those are, so these are the large scale or, or, or regional scale uh, motions that, that, uh, that we could simulate with these uh, ROMs, FECOM, or HICOM, or MIT GCM, while these are the motions um, that could be simulated, uh, simulated by this large LED simulation model. And by the way, this is an image uh, taken after uh, the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. And, and these lines indicate the convergent zones of the lamellar circulations that you, that you see uh, in the previous uh, slides. And, and so the large LED simulation uh, it solves the incompressible Levier-Stokes equation and it is modified to include the effect of surface gravity waves. And the results of this large LED simulation um, models are usually used to develop or improve parameterizations for vertical mixing in hint casting or forecasting models, including ROMs or FECOM. And here is a table comparing the two different types of models, usually the large LED simulation model is long hydrostatic, uh, while the RAMS models are hydrostatic, so that it's faster to run. And, uh, and it's also usually numerically more accurate because it uses spectrum methods, while the RAMS model usually use finite difference, finite volume, or finite element uh, methods. And the domain is uh, small because, and, and, and the grid resolution is also very, very fine compared to these RAMS models. And, uh, and the surface forcing um, is spatially uniform. So this large eddy simulation model can only simulate um, idealized cases. And also because the domain is small, it usually uses uh, periodic lateral boundary conditions while uh, the RAMS model could use um, uh, realistic surface and natural boundary conditions. Um, so the Lagrangian bubble model um, simulates millions of uh, Lagrangian bubbles and ordinary e differential equations for Lagrangian bubbles. And we simulate the location of those bubbles, the gas contents in those bubbles, and the size of those bubbles. And why do we want to do a Lagrangian model? And because Lagrangian models are actually uh, a little bit more complicated to implement because we need to uh, allow those Lagrangian particles to move around processors. And uh, it is because uh, physically it can naturally separate the completely and the partially dissolved bubbles and, and this separation is very important in mechanistically understanding uh, the bubble mediated AC gas exchange. And numerically it is also more accurate because it could avoid uh, numerical errors, diffusive and dispersive errors associated with the integration of an erection equation and computationally, it is also more efficient because the computer powers are only assigned to, um, to simulate uh, the bubbles. While in a, a concentration model, we might spend a lot of computing power to, to simulate uh, the places, the concentration where there are not much bubbles because we need to uh, simulate the concentration field of bubbles at any, at any depth. And in some depth, there are no bubbles. And, uh, and recently, I also applied this Lagrangian uh, model to study the evolution of other particular matters, including oil and marine uh, plastics. And the dissolved gas mo model just uh, solves the erection diffusion equation for gas concentrations, and it receives uh, gas flux gases from the bubble fields and and also a gas transfer at the, at the ocean surface. Um, so the first results I want to present is the simulation of uh, the dissolved gas and the bubbles during a winter storm at Ocean Station Papa. And as I've introduced earlier, the Ocean Station Papa is in the subarctic um, dryer in the Pacific Ocean. And there are very good measurements concurrent uh, hourly or three hourly measurements of meteorological condition, ocean environments, including the waves and also dissolved gases. So this really allows me to uh, validate and to do a good uh, model data comparison. And, 
and, and I chose a peer weird in the winter 2011. So here day zero is um, in 12 a.m. of November 14, 2011, and I do the simulation for 15 days. And the reason I chose this period is because there is a winter storm. So here in the upper panel, um, the left y-axis is wind speed, uh, which is the, uh, for the black line here. And, uh, and the right uh, y-axis is the lead heat flux, and we can see that on day three, uh, there is a winter storm passing this location and the wind speed is very high and there's also a very um, a strong cooling at the ocean surface. And the middle panel here is the wave age. So why do I want to show the wave age? Because uh, the wave age tells us how strong the turbulence is and also how much bubbles and how deep the bubbles are entrained uh, during breaking waves. So when this wave age is large, it means that the turbulence is strong because it means that there are strong lamellar turbulence. At the same time, it also means that there are very, very frequent wave breaking, but these breaking waves are usually very small. So what that means is that when the wave age is small, uh, it means that the turbulence is weaker. Uh, uh, weaker means with respect to an, the large wave age at the same wind speed and there are less frequent wave breaking, but the, bre the breaking waves are larger. So this is why the wave age are important. And the lower panel here is the atmospheric pressure and gas exchange uh, is influenced by the atmospheric pressure. Um, so this is the initial condition. Um, the left panel here is the temperature and it is already uh, in late fall and early winter. So the water is cold in this region. And this is the oxygen profiles. And we can see a subsurface bump here. And that's because this is below the mixed layer and the sunlight penetrates uh, deeper than the mixed layer during uh, summer and early fall so that there is photosynthesis below the mixed layer. And th that's why there is a uh, um, um, subsurface oxygen bump here. But below that because of Immunization, so oxygen decreases with water depth. While for nitrogen, um, the surface nitrogen is smaller than the deeper nitrogen because nitrogen gas are uh, assume 100% saturated, while the uh, the solubility of uh, the gas uh, increase with decreasing temperature. So that's why um, the nitrogen is larger below the mixed layer and smaller at the mixed layer. And this is. Um, how I configure the model. So I use a, me a millions of Lagrangian particles to represent bubbles. And uh, in this simulation, I make two runs. The first one is without gas bubbles, but I use the, uh, the gas uh, flux parameterization by Wannikov, which is a popular used parameterization. And in the second simulation, I add bubbles and and the surface flux is um, used and estimate from uh, dimethyl sulfide studies. And the, the reason I use that is because dimethyl sulfide, the gas transfer of dimethyl sulfide is not influenced by the gas bubbles. And, and so here are the results. The first is about the temperature. And, and here is the 15 days of the simulation. And this is the simulated uh, mixed layer temperature. And the red line is observation while the black line is the model. And we can see that the model uh, matched the observation pretty well um, in, in, in these 15 days, except between uh, 9 to 12 days. And the reason is probably because uh, there are some horizontal, let's say, mesoscale eddies or some mesoscale processes that these large eddy simulation cannot capture. Um, and these are um, the simulated uh, bubble fields. So this is the simulated bubble number density in the ocean. And, and this is uh, at about day three when the wind is strongest and we can see that the bubble plume can penetrate to more than 20 meters of water depth. So what that means is that the water, uh, the bubbles can dissolve uh, at this depth when the water is uh, even very super saturated. Um, so this is the simulated 
um, dissolved gas concentrations and on the upper left panel is the dissolved oxygen concentration and the upper right panel is the dissolved nitrogen concentration and the red line is observation and the black line is the simulation with gas bubbles and the blue line is the simulation using without bubbles but using the running call of 1992 parameterization. And, uh, and this is in the lower panel is the history of the wind speed for your reference. So the wind is the strongest at uh, day three. And, uh, and so we, what we can see is that the simulation with gas bubbles can capture uh, the measure dissolved gas concentration. Notice that here we can capture uh, the observed oxygen and nitrogen simultaneously. That's important because, um, because if I can only simulate one correctly, then maybe you might find that's how I treat the model. But if I can simulate both gases accurately, then it means that the model is at least to some degree accurate. But, um, at, uh, but if, I, if I use the same physics field, but uh, use the parameterization by running cough, which is commonly used in a lot of uh, uh, Earth system models, then there is no way that uh, we could reproduce the uh, observed uh, dissolved gas concentrations during, um, during this winter storm. Um, so we want to understand uh, what causes this um, evolution of the dissolved gas concentration. So I did a dissolved gas budget uh, for this peer, for this 15 day period. So here on the left hand side, which is indicated by the wet is uh, by the wet color is the rate of change of the dissolved gas concentration in the mixed layer. And this black Fe is the entrainment. So if you entrain water from below the mixed layer, so they also change the dissolved gas concentration. And uh, this blue turn, which is indicated by the blue line here, is the surface gas flux. And, and this cyan turn, which is indicated by the cyan line here, is the gas flux through the partially dissolved bubbles. And the magenta turn, um, uh, we indicated by the magenta line here, is the gas flux from the completely um, dissolved bubbles. And, uh, and in the upper panel here is the simulation uh, with bubbles and in the lower panels here are the simulation without gas bubbles and, and the left panels are the oxygen budget while the right panels are the nitrogen budget. And we can see that when the wind strengthens, um, the bubbles um, uh, plays a very important role in injecting gases into the mixed layer. Um, at the same time, in this simulation, um, the surface flux um, is outgassing, and, but in the uh, simulation, we found gas bubbles because there is no bubble flux. Um, so during this uh, strong wind period, um, the surface flux has to be uh, from the atmosphere to the ocean because, uh, uh, and that's why the dissolved gas um, concentration is uh, lower than the observed values. And, uh, and so during the whole period, um, the, the bubbles are injecting gases into the ocean. And, um, and in fact, during about day eight, which is not, and date line, which is not so evident here, the partially dissolved bubbles actually uh, helps the outgassing while the completely dissolved bubbles still inject gases. And that's because um, the atmosphere atmospheric pressure is very low at the time. Um, so this is the evolution of the saturation anomaly um, in the ocean. Again, um, the black line is the, is the bubble run, while the blue line is the run without bubbles, but with a running curve, 1992 parameterization. And uh, we can see that the run with bubbles can capture, can simulate the observations well while um, the run without bubbles will underestimate dissolved gas concentration in the mixed layer. And, uh, and, and, and also, uh, I don't show the budget, uh, budget figures here, but the budget analysis shows that this saturation anomaly is primarily controlled by the atmospheric pressure because uh, atmospheric processes are faster than oceanic processes, except 
in about day three when um, there is strong bubble flux. Um, and, and so the next is that we want to do a little bit more analysis about this bubble mediated gas flux because usually we would parameterize the gas flux using wind speed. But here, um, there are periods when the wind is rising and there are periods when the wind is weakening. And when the wind is rising, um, the wave age is very small. And when the wind is weakening, the wave age is larger. So we want to see the effect of wave age on, uh, on the bubble mediated uh, gas flux. Um, so we chose um, two periods. Um, one is when the wind is rising, and then the other one is when the wind is uh, weakening. And this is indicated by these uh, west circles and red lines. So the west circles are um, my simulated um, gas flux, bubble mediated gas flux during when the wind is weakening. And these black circles and black lines are, um, are the LES diagnosed uh, bubble mediated gas flux when the wind is strengthening. So uh, uh, slightly between be, before day three. Um, and and here the circles are the diagonal gas flux from this ALES simulation, while the lines are parameterizations, including bubble induced supersaturation. So right now there are already a few parameterizations for for bubble induced supersaturation, and here I saw three of them, two by uh, Dave Nicholson in which hole, and uh, one is uh, that he published he published in 2011, and then the other one is that he published in 2016. And then another one is uh, what I developed in 2013. And, and what you can see is that when the wind is uh, strengthening, the gas flux is larger than when the wind is weakening for the same wind speed. And, 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 and that's because uh, when the wind is strengthening, the wave age is smaller, the wave is less developed. What that means is that there are less breaking waves, but the breaking waves are larger. When the breaking wave events occur, the breaking waves are larger so that it can uh, inject initially the bubbles to a greater depth. And that's why when the wind is strengthening, um, the bubble mediated gas flux is larger than when the wind is weakening. And, uh, and this is not captured in all the existing uh, parameterizations. Um, so a, a summary for this part is that um, the coupled ocean bubble gas model can reason, reasonably uh, reproduce observations and gas bubbles are really important in determining the mixed layer dissolved gas concentrations. And, uh, and also for the same wind speed, the bubble gas flux is larger when the wind is strengthening than when the wind is weakening. So in the rest of the talk, I will talk about uh, this bubble gas flux parameterization. And also, because just now, I saw the effect of bubbles on the surface mixed layer. But I will show in the rest of my talk that bubbles, although they cannot penetrate into the deep ocean, but they have an important effect in the deep ocean also. How can that be, you see? Um, so here is a comparison of a few parameterizations. The x-axis is wind speed, and the y-axis is the bubble-induced supersaturation for argon. Um, and, and the different lines are different uh, parameterizations. And, 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 and most of them are, uh, are parameterizations inferred from uh, observations. And, and these are Wolf and Thorpe and also uh, Liang and L in 2013 are parameterizations from, from models. And, and as you can see, uh, this just tells you how uncertain it is uh, in this bubble parameterization of bubble uh, induced supersaturations. And, um, and so if we want to further understand uh, um, what the bubble's effects are, so these are the bubble induced supersaturations for different gases. So on the upper left panel is argon, this is oxygen, this is nitrogen, and this is carbon dioxide. So the first is that the bubble-induced supersaturation um, increases 
with wind speed. And for example, uh, for nitrogen uh, in this parameterization, uh, the bubble induced supersaturation is uh, more than 5% when the temperature is below about 20 degrees Celsius. And, 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 and this bubble induced supersaturation is larger for less soluble gases because they are, uh, and, and is smaller for more soluble gases. And also, um, this bubble induced supersaturation is smaller at higher temperature and larger at lower temperature because at lower temperature, the surface gas exchange is lower. And, and so we want to evaluate their effect in the global ocean. So we put these parameterizations into a global ocean transport model by Kadivala et al. 2005. And this uh, transport model just uh, estimate uh, the effect of a source at a certain box on all other boxes so that uh, we can calculate uh, the concentration at a certain location by doing only one matrix operation. And uh, again, I do, and this circulation field in this study is from this ocean carbon model intercomparison project. And, and it's a very core resolution, cost resolution, horizontal resolution and vertical resolution are, are quite uh, coarse. And in these models, bubbles are not resolved, so we need to use the parameterization. And there are, again, two runs. The first run is with this uh, bubble-induced supersaturation. And then the second one is without this bubble-induced supersaturation. And again, we want to see the effect of bubbles in the global ocean. Um, so this is how the results looks like. And this is the uh, saturation anomaly of argon. And, uh, and we can see that because of the temperature effect, um, the, the dissolved argon is undersaturated at high latitudes and supersaturated at low latitudes. And that's the same for most other gases. And the, the reason we chose to show the effect of argon is because argon is an inner gas. So there is no chemical or biological influence on argon. And the only thing that could change um, the, the concentration of argon is heating, cooling, mixing, and also bubbles. Um, um, so in order to show the bubble effect, we use the run uh, with this bubble-induced supersaturation minus the simulation without the bubble-induced uh, supersaturation so that the effect of heating, cooling, and mixing are subtracted. And the residue is the bubble effect. Um, so we can see that the bubble effect are larger at high latitudes when the wind is stronger and the temperature is lower. Uh, at the surface ocean, but in the deep ocean, we can see a very persistent, uniform uh, bubble effects globally. And, and so the bubbles only exist at the surface ocean, but its effect is all over, in, even in the deep ocean. And the reason is because of this uh, deep water. So the bubbles effect, the bubble flux parameterization sets the boundary for these ocean ventilations so that these supersaturated conditions follows the deep water mass um, into the deep ocean so that the deep ocean um, has a strong, um, has a very strong bubble, uh, bubble effects. And, and how do we know that um, this is something realistic? Well, we compare this uh, with observations. So, the observation of argon is relatively uh, rare in the global ocean and in, in the deep ocean. And here are two of them. One is uh, the HOT, which is the Hawaii Ocean Time Series. And then the other one is uh, the BATS, which is the Bermuda Atlantic Time Series. And, and so the right panels here are the BATS and the uh, and, uh, and the, and the uh, left panel here are the results in hot. And the circles are the observations. And, 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 um, and the upper panels are the simulation with bubbles, while the lower panels are the simulations without the bubble-induced uh, supersaturated effect. And as we can see, um, uh, without the bubble-induced 
uh, supersaturated conditions, um, all these parameterizations will, um, will underestimate the, um, the dissolved argon concentrations at both locations. And when we um, include the effect of um, bubble induced supersaturation, and, uh, and at least some of the parameterization are able to uh, reproduce the observed uh, values at these two locations. So it just again demonstrates that these bubbles effects are at the surface ocean and also in the deep ocean. And, uh, and it's important if one wants to accurately simulate the dissolved gas concentration. Um, so, so the last question that you might have is that, well, why do we want to accurately simulate um, the dissolved gas concentrations in the deep ocean and the surface ocean? Um, so here is a simulated um, nitrogen to argon ratio in the ocean and a bubble due to the bubbles. And we can see that the bubbles leads to about 0.6 to 0.7 percent in, uh, in nitrogen to argon ratio. Um, and this nitrogen to argon ratio is also used um, to infer um, the delargification or nitrogen fixations. And, and the signal due to that is usually between uh, 1 to 1.5 percent in the deep ocean. So it means that half of the signals that uh, you could capture is actually from bubbles, but not from the biogeochemical processes. And similarly, if one wants to use the dissolved oxygen concentration at the near surface ocean to infer biological production, which is commonly used, um, at least to my knowledge, um, then uh, one has to uh, get rid of the bubble effects if they, uh, they want to accurately estimate uh, the biological productions based on oxygen measurements, which is now widely available from uh, many of the argo floats or the drifters. Um, so this is why these uh, bubble gas flux parameterizations are important. Um, and so um, the summary of the later part is that um, um, the bubble induced equilibrium, equilibrium supersaturation increases with wind speed and decreases with increasing water temperature. And these bubble effects are important in accurately uh, modeling dissolved gas concentrations in both the surface ocean and, uh, and the deep ocean. And if we want to accurately estimate biogeochemical processes based on dissolved gas concentrations, we really need to have an accurate uh, Parameterization for the bubble effects in AC gas flux. Thank you.